I'm Emma. I'm a climate scientist who really loves being outdoors, so I built this van so that I could do that more often. This video is sponsored by AO Lithium. The battery price is just $599.99. Use code FLORB for $30 off, only $569.99 per unit. Click the link in the description and order your lithium battery with built-in Bluetooth real-time monitoring today. And remember to subscribe. I had been thinking about buying a van for a very long time, and a couple years ago when the pandemic hit, I was living in a tiny apartment with a ton of roommates, and my work said, you have to work from home, and I said, there's no way. The next week, I just, I went and bought the van, and I had been thinking about it for a long time before the pandemic happened, so I already, I had saved, I was ready to just like make the purchase. It was more about having the time to, you know, actually like build it. My parents have always done everything themselves, and they always sort of made me and my siblings help out. <laughs> so I think that was very helpful, just like having some of those like building, crafting skills going in. And I did do a lot of like sort of sketching and planning what I wanted to do. I wish I had done a little more though, because my plan changed constantly as I was building. As you start building and you start to realize like, oh my gosh, every like quarter inch matters. <laughs> like, <laughs> Um, especially when you're trying to fit like different like appliances or like <laughs> whatnot in there. I spent a lot of time making sure that everything was very like it matched, like sort of focused a little bit more on like like crafting something that like felt a little bit more like just like nicer. Um, I was planning to live in it. You know, I, I live in San Francisco and I, I have roommates, but the van is my bedroom. So <laughs> I think it was really important to me that it was like somewhere I like wanted to be and that like it was comfortable to sleep in every day, um, even when I'm like in the city and sort of living a more normal sort of fixed life. So uh, it's been a work in progress ever since I, you know, finished it at six months. And of course, as you, as you live in it and you learn, you start to change things. This is my van. It's a 2019 Ford Transit, long wheelbase, but not extended. My only real criteria was that it had the high roof and it was the length I wanted. Um, and so if this van meets all those criteria, <laughs> um, it does have a couple windows on the back. And then I have a couple slider windows on the side. Those I installed myself just to give a little bit more light in the van. On the back, this is a pretty recent addition, um, but I added a ladder. Something was wrong with my electrical system and I could not reach my solar panels on top. It's also great because I can put my cell signal booster on it. I have a WeBoost, it's the one that they make for RVs. So that was kind of like a, a high priority item where it was sort of just, I was like, what is the best cell signal booster out there I can get? Um, the solar panels up top, I have two 300 watt solar panels for a total of 600 watts. A bit of a homemade roof rack I made from some metal strut. I was really nervous about wiring into my car batteries and to get power while driving. So I wanted to make sure that I was able to sort of charge up every day just from the sun um, and just be as off grid as possible. I have a 2000 watt inverter, which was basically the smallest I could do that could still support a microwave. The inverter also allows me to charge through shore power. So I have a plug that can plug into RV sites or into a regular outlet. Um, there's a sort of like adapter on here. I have a 25 gallon water tank back here. I usually fill up at uh, campsites or sometimes gas stations and a valve so I can just open the valve, turn on the pump, water comes out of here. Um, honestly don't shower with it much because I've mostly been traveling places where it's a little too cold to, but good for at least like washing off shoes and stuff and also extra water that I can use to fill up my uh, sort of drinking water source at my sink if I ever need to. In the back doors here, I have a painting done by my very artistic sister. I had some canvas, I just sort of covered the back doors with it. So, and I, I love it, it's like very textured, it follows the whole color palette. That's about it for the outside. Um, here's the inside. The chairs don't rotate or anything. To me, it was more important to have sort of this like separation between the cab and the back, kind of for safety reasons, um, also just for privacy and insulation. It's one by four sort of studs. And then um, I just, I have this like particle board from Home Depot. It's got like the little grooves on it for some decoration. Um, that's what I used for sort of the whole the whole van. Um, and so then I have, a, I have a layer of just like foam insulation inside, which helps sort of keep some of the heat from the cab separated and keeps a little bit cooler back here. 
I have a shelf up over the cab area. I found these just like brackets that someone online was selling. So I just like cut out this piece of wood and it just sort of slides in there. It gave me something to anchor the wall, the studs. Uh, into as I was building. The ceiling was just very thin cedar tongue and groove boards and sort of over time I just painted them with a lot of different layers of paint and I would sort of do like a layer of melted wax underneath the paint and then after painting uh, hit it with a blow dryer and it left it with a sort of like aged like faded paint look. Um, I also did some like gray stain on some of them to get more of like a grayish um, barnwood look. Moving down, I have additional cabinets and storage space and then microwave. So this one, it's a little bit lower wattage. I think it's 1200 watts um, and it just, it can run off the inverter I have. It's it's from a just RV supplier site. I have a composting toilet I store down here. So this is, this is a nature's head one. It was just sort of one of those things where it was one that a lot of people were recommending and I thought about making my own, but I think the toilet was something I was like, I really don't want to have to deal with the, the mess of like, trying to have something that I like built myself and maybe doesn't work quite right. I was like, that's something I want to like work correctly. <laughs> I just went with one that was well regarded in the van life community. Something that was important to me was having a decent sized desk area. So I have a desk here. It's, you know, it's not the biggest desk in the world, but pretty good size for a space as small as this. And I have a little bit of extra desk space that I can just sort of flip up. My partner comes with me traveling and so then we can both work in here. And then over on the side, I have my sort of more kitchen sink area, sink cover, which is nice. It helps sort of keep the, the gray water smells contained. Down here, I store a couple of drinking water tanks and it's nice to have these sort of like smaller tanks in addition to the big one in the back, just because this is something I can sort of fill up at like any water source, as opposed to I need something with like a hose and a thread on it. I just have a, a small electric pump under there. It pumps directly from the tank and just drains through gravity down into the gray water tank. If I'm sort of like only using it for drinking water, it'll definitely last a week or so. Um, if I'm, you know, having to like wash dishes more frequently and stuff like that, more like probably like every three days. Um, and then my one in the back is usually good for three or four refills of these of this tank. So um, usually I, I can go at least a week or two without needing to fill up on water. In the spirit of using every space possible, I have just a little flip thing here. I did one of those sort of like resin pour um, countertops. So this was a piece of cedar I got from a wood shop, cut it in half, flipped it, and then once it was done, cut it to the shape of the counter and then did another sort of like thin layer of uh, sealant resin on top. This is fake tile. I think I got them from Amazon or something. I like found them and I was like, this is like in the color scheme of my van. I just added it. <laughs> so my cabinets up here, I mostly store like food and then like cleaning items and toothbrush and stuff like that. Um, kind of a mess, but I have a lot of like cleaning supplies and like uh, personal supplies in here. Um, and then this little one over here is empty right now, but usually I have a lot of like dry food items in there. Over here is the other end of my cell booster. I'll leave my phone that I run my hotspot off from right here next to it. Um, usually it'll give me an extra couple bars of service, which is really great, especially if I'm sort of out off grid somewhere. And then in this drawer here, I keep just kind of like a mishmash of things, but I have an induction cook a stove. I was a little nervous about putting like gas fired stove in here. So, and luckily I have a pretty good size electrical system. So it supports the induction cooktop. I'm honestly surprised more people don't use them because it, it heats up so quickly. Um, and you just get really good like temperature control with it. This is a direct DC fridge. This one is from Dometic. It has a little bit of a freezer space. Um, and then you can also convert the entire fridge to a freezer if need be. I really like it because um, it allows me to sort of have everything I would have at home. In the bench here, not as, only is it good for sitting on, <laughs> but I also, I have some extra storage space, so keep my batteries down here. Um, and then a little bit harder to get to and see, but I have just like some extra storage space. There's not much in there, just a few cans of food right now. I keep a tool set in the far side. So I have additional cabinet space here. This is where I keep most of my clothing and then the bed here. This mattress is the cheapest custom size mattress I could find. I have these like little side lights and you can plug phone chargers into those, which is really nice to have just really accessible, um, extra sort of like decorative lighting. But that's about it. This is my van. 
things that I'm glad I sort of had in my head when I started out, knowing that it's not just like Instagram, that you stay in Walmart parking lots way more than you want to admit, gas stations and all, all those fun places. Um, I think also it's a small space. I travel with my partner a lot and you definitely have to communicate and really be good about that to, to do that. Otherwise, it's really easy to get on each other's nerves and get cabin fever. So yeah, watching like just like a ton of YouTube videos, like reading every blog I could, that was really helpful. It was easier to have a little bit more of a real idea of like how much things are gonna cost but also see that like you can do it for any amount of money it just sort of depends on what you want since I often am traveling for you know a couple months at a time I'm really glad I have you know a bigger one that I can stand up in if I just wanted something to camp in I would absolutely get something smaller but I think really having a clear idea of like what the purpose is and what you want to do with this vehicle is really important because there's such a range of what you can do like how you can incorporate it into your life you definitely want to like build around that. One piece of advice, I think when in doubt, probably practicality over aesthetics is the way to go. There's lots of opportunities to, you know, make things look nice and add little bits of design. Really spend a lot of time thinking about how you are going to use each and every space. This is the AO lithium batteries. What sets these apart from other lithium batteries is that they have a built-in smart Bluetooth module supported by iPhone and Android. So you can know exactly what your battery data is at any time. Laboriously wired battery monitors are no longer needed. With the built-in smart battery management system, it provides low temperature protection for the batteries in the battery cells auto balance. So you don't have to worry about them when charging. The battery price is only $599.99 and you can use code FLOOR for $30 off so it will be only $569.99 per unit. Click the link in the description and order yours now.